<laughs> Hello, everyone. I am here with my buddies Richard and Flynn. Hey, uh, how are you guys doing? <laughs> Good. Hi. How are you doing, Boone? Good to see Good. you. Good. I cannot wait to talk to you. Um, welcome, everyone. It is a new episode of A Full Spotlight Live. Let's go! Wow, I'm so pumped after that intro. I know. I gotta go run around the block now. <laughs> I'm glad I'm so I'm so glad to have you guys here. How you been? Glad to be here. Good. I know it's great to see you. We're doing great. I uh I I'm I'm doing things a little bit differently to everyone watching from home. Thank you so much for being here. Let's pop into the comments and see who we got. Um uh Andy, Dave Morgan, Dave, thank you for being here, buddy. Uh, we got Lucy, J Productions, Jesse, Moto is with us. Hey, Moto. Hey, Moto. Hey, Moto. Um, all right. So, Richard, Flynn, thank you yeah. so much for being on the show with me this week. I'm. Everyone watching is going to notice that I don't have behind me the stuff that I usually have behind me because I am not in my studio. I'm actually <laughs> I'm broadcasting from location. Uh, and if you could see, man, I almost kind of want to show you what's over there maybe in a little yeah, bit, in, yeah. in, a, in a little bit i'll connect my phone and and let people see what's mm -hmm. over there um but what you, what is going on with you guys it's been a, it's been a while since obviously a while since we've seen each other but um i i we see each other online all the time so what do you guys got going on well we've oh been goodness. staying home a lot but we've been getting into lots of lego trouble <laughs> for sure i'm building a little mock even tonight well, and, and, you know, we started a YouTube channel at you, from your inspiration um, not too long ago. And we're like, we're about to hit our hundredth episode in like a week and a half or something like that. It's kind of crazy. That's awesome. I'm going to be there. I'm going to be I there. Know, I know. We're so excited. I think we do have a lot of overlap in our audiences, but for anyone who doesn't Absolutely. watch, if you don't subscribe to Tricky Bricks and you don't watch their live streams, they're incredible. And I'm going to be there on Sunday, August 2nd, second. Second, Sunday, yeah. August 2nd. I will be there at 10 a.m. Pacific time for episode 100 Yay. Of, uh, of your broadcast. <laughs> um, I will be there for at least a little while, uh, but I'm going to try to be there for a long while. Um, for some reason, uh, the, the chats don't seem to be coming in, um, yeah, I noticed. Which, oh. which makes me feel like it's just not working, um, but that's okay. So uh, I always start off this live stream with sort of a general question about like how did you guys get connected to the AFOL community and and we'll talk I think we'll be able to talk a little bit more about you know like um how we met and and sort of like how we became yeah. friends um and so maybe that's later in the story um but I <laughs> would I would love and I think everyone watching would love to hear like how did where did it begin for you guys well, I think for me, I mean, if you want to go way back, I built all the time I was a kid. I got sets for every holiday, every birthday, Christmas, everything, all the time. I was all about Lego. It was my favorite toy. And then sometime in my early teens, I don't know, I was distracted by other things. And I'm sure I got <laughs> rid of all of it at a garage sale for things I don't even remember. But jumping way, way forward, um, well, you tell this part. Oh, so we um, we picked up an X Men Lego set as like just a need for something to do uh, rather than watch TV all the time. So, and we really enjoyed putting it together. And then we started um, we sort of bought a bunch of random Lego and started building mocks pretty much right away. I want to stop him there just for a second and say that we got that set. He gave it to me for my birthday, and then since we liked it. He went on Craigslist and got 20 pounds of jumbled <laughs> Lego. And we didn't know what half the pieces were even. No, but, not but at that we, point. we dove in. Yeah, we dove in. It was really, a, we had a really great time doing it. And then we started sort of sharing. Um, just, I was like, oh, I didn't even know there was a Lego community online. I found Flickr. Um, and that oh, was yeah. at the time, like, just kind of about to not be a thing anymore. But, um, and personally, I actually still mm -hmm. think it's the best showcase out there for Lego models. I mean, I know everybody's gone to Instagram now, but 
Well, you can't can see the detail, in, right? Yeah, you just you can't see the detail. You can't zoom in. I just really, I personally liked um, the Flickr format. I'm sad that it's not so much of a thing anymore. But anyway, uh, um, we did fast that. Fast forward again, we went to a convention. Well, right? before that, we ended up on the Brothers Brick. Um, both oh, of us, yeah. each of us for separate mocks. And then um, it was like, oh, this is really like, this People is bigger like than I thought it is. was. And so we were like, oh, well, let's go. The, the Bricks by the Bay convention was on my birthday weekend. And I was like, look, for my birthday, let's go to this convention. I have no mm -hmm. idea what it's going to be like. We had no idea what we were doing. We didn't We've, know anybody. We brought and, our PS4 because we thought we wouldn't have anything to do and we'd just be in the hotel room. <laughs> 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 we just had no idea what we were getting into. But it turned out to be an, an incredible, super fun time. So, um, yeah, that was kind of our that was our our intro into all of it. And you guys are really involved. Uh, you you've done Bricks by the Bay every year for how many years? Uh, uh, six, five sixteen now? since. Well, let's see. Twenty sixteen was our first. Yeah, we went and didn't present in twenty sixteen, and yeah. then we've been every year since. Yeah. And Bricks LA some and Bricks Cascade recently. That was fun. Yeah. We really enjoy yeah. it. We really enjoy that. We we gotta talk more about Bricks Cascade um when we, <laughs> when, we, when we get to that part of the story. But um behind you, you actually have the model that you were showing when I met you, which yeah, was oh, yeah, it's true. It, um that that's, was that's this one right here. Yeah, are we oh. bringing it? I don't know if we should bring it down or not. We can bring it down. I it's guess. up to you. It's up to you. Yeah, we can do that. Here, I'll grab the stuff in the back. You grab the piece. Now, unfortunately, oh as we all know, <laughs> with mocks that you keep don't together, sometimes you have to go get pieces off of them. So yeah. <laughs> there's some of it still missing. But yeah, this was our. Um, yeah, we stole a few pieces. Our werewolf stuff. lunar clock that we were showing when we met you. And you can kind of see. There's a little minifigure werewolf in there. Yeah. And this moon here. That's a Lowell sphere. Sorry, right? you can see our up camera from our show. <laughs> um, this little moon actually has does the phases of the moon. And as it does the phases of the moon, the little where the little minifigure turns into a werewolf. It's awesome. It's awesome. And there's, so, there's lighting on the inside. Yeah, and, it, and Flynn did that cool mosaic there too. <laughs> So these all all of these um, memories are coming back from a year ago, you know, on Facebook and and other other platforms. I'm seeing these things that were happening exactly a year ago. Yeah, and I think I think Bricks by the Bay would have just been like two weekends ago. Um, you know, it was two weekends ago. Yep, yep. yeah, the, the virtual, virtual one. Yeah, and so in real life, and I, so I met you guys. I I have this story that I tell over and over again about when Lego Masters you know, the United States version of the show was announced at San Diego Comic-Con. That was one weekend after, that was the very next weekend after Bricks by the Bay. And oh, uh, yeah. John Hanlon, John Hanlon and I were at Bricks by the Bay. I met you guys. We did the interview about your awesome werewolf clock. And then we drove to San Diego and um, we spent, uh, we spent an afternoon uh, on our way down at uh, Bricklink, the Bricklink headquarters and then um, we went to the San Diego Comic Con, and that's when I found out. So it's, it's like weird how all these stories are like intertwined. Um, and uh, you know, I met Sam at uh, Bricks, uh, a Brick World Chicago last oh, year. Cool. So that was just, you know, that was just like one month before I met you guys. I met Sam, and then we all, you know, three months later, end up being thrown into the <laughs> weird crucible that was the <laughs> Masters, right? But. Um, that's awesome. Um, I, I, I just, I love it. And I love reliving those things. Um, anyway, it looks like maybe the, the chat is working now. So Ben Khan, thank you, Ben, Dave, and uh, Moto are our moderators tonight. Thank you guys so much for being in there. And we've got uh, Jonathan David, Orange Bricks, Andy Yay. is in oh. there, Melissa, Insane Lego Fan, J Productions. Um, I saw earlier... Uh, well, anyway, thank you all so much for watching. We really appreciate it. It looks like it is working. We're just getting a little bit late in um, in the, the view that we have here in the live studio. But, you guys, I think it is time that we start. Uh, do, do you want to say anything more about sort of like your journey as AFOLs, or should we get into the show and tell? People want to see mocks. I think oh, I think I think show and tell it all uh, it all happened really quickly. Yeah, know, like five years building or something like that. 
Yeah, I had no idea that it would be. Um, it's actually, I gotta close this. It's distracting. There we go. I actually had opened YouTube <laughs> to see if I could see the chat running on time, which it actually is. But then I started getting confused. Anyway, yeah, it, it's hard. Uh, but I mean, I'll just say this: like, what really kicked it kind of over the line for us was that the following year we uh, we went to Bricks by the Bay. This would have been 2017, right? Yeah, 2017, and we decided we were gonna bring something this time. Um, and we decided, oh, well, we'll just make a, we'll just make a little thing and bring it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But, um, well, um, it, I mean, we'll take five months to bring a little thing. Right. right. So what it ended up being was a six foot by four foot, um, sort of train layout. Um, the theme that year was California dream. And so we decided to do California as a theme park ride because we're both really into theme parks and yeah. sort of like the history iconic things about California sort of like put into a ride. So mm -hmm. actually I think I have, I have a picture of it. it. Oh, here it is. Uh, that I can share. Let me see. I'm uh, working on getting, I'm working on setting my screen up here so that I can see us live there. and see the chat pop out from YouTube. Um, because yeah. there's so many cool people in the chat right now. Um, I know. I see we'll, Lisa Head is here. We will. Here. We will certainly have Q and A later in the session, fun. and um, Richard and Flynn and I, I think, will have some fun uh, answering questions together. Um, but uh, and I'll, I'll plug this: there is an extra special segment that has never happened on my channel. Mm -hmm. Has never happened on AFL Spotlight Live, and it'll be a surprise. <laughs> <laughs> It'll be a surprise when we throw it at you. It's a special segment just because Flynn and Richard are on the show. And I've probably already given away too much for people who watch your show. But um, so let's uh, let's kick it over to show and tell. Show and tell doesn't have a song yet, but I can still sing about it while we watch the slide. Watch the slide. <laughs> That sounds like a song to me. <laughs> that that is definitely a signature Boone song. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so what do you got? What do you got? Uh, I have got a chair. Yeah, it's not sharing? showing up in oh, the there other. It is. There okay, it is. So this was California Dreamin'. This was our big piece that we did, um, and you can see. I mean, kind of in the distance, over on the left, going into the trees, you can see that we. What we did is it's a nine volt train track that was given to us by our nephews who were very excited when we got into the hobby and they're like, oh, we're not using this anymore. Here, have this completely awesome nine volt train with more track than you'll ever be able to use. That's so, awesome. Yeah, we, incorpor so we incorporated it into here and what you can kind of see from the back is that we- like Clockwise, um, right? Yeah, it, we turned the trains into sports cars. <laughs> and then the sports cars went around and then you can kind of see, um, there on the left, kind of uh, in the very front, you can see the queue to the line. And then everything went kind of to the left and we had a mission, we had a gold rush town uh, with a with a saloon. And then you went into the forest and then there was a mountain. With a bear that came out. Yeah, a bear roar. came out of a little cave. And then you can see we went through like the valley, Hollywood, and this little part over here on the right under Disneyland is a micro LA freeway like um, traffic jam. And then, and then we had the beach kind and of the, the beach. beach area down here uh, at the bottom. Can, so. and can you uh, can you oh, can you zoom in on this picture? Can you zoom in on this picture and pan around a little bit for us? Maybe with that. Uh, maybe. Oh yeah. Oh, I don't know. I don't know. Who knows? We can. We'll just see if. Look, there's our surfer in the oh, way. Cool. This was our first try at lighting. There's lighting underneath the um, underneath the wave to light his face there, and the shark popped out. When right when the cars would go by, a sensor would sense, and the shark would come out and attack the cars. Yeah, that was sort of our our ode to the Universal Studios tour with Jaws that would like yeah. you know, come yeah. out at the. Yeah, so yeah, you can see there's a little bit of closer up. There's our beach area. There's the queue. Okay, there's one question from the chat about this model, and I have one question about this model. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, or Orange Bricks says you guys drive sports cars. Do you guys drive sports no, cars, or is that like a, a like a California reference? Yeah, we it's don't. a California reference. I grew up in Southern California, and there were all these little like convertible hot rods, um, and so it was kind of that idea, just racing around the freeways <laughs> of California. And I do have a couple of um, I do have like a couple of close ups of the actual model. So let me open those real quick, and then I'll share them for you. 
Awesome. My so and I'm my, still getting used my to question it. was, been, uh, what was that? This this was you said this was like the first thing you brought to a convention. Yes. After yeah. you decided yeah. to start showing. <laughs> yes. we, we had made a few little things before, like really like sixteen by sixteen. Um, but this was our oh that Wait, was, hang on. We I'm trying to get I'm trying to open multiple. Yeah, I think we dove in big. We took a workshop. <laughs> um, we took a workshop from Eva Carinder. Carinder at Bricks by the Bay in robotics, and we bought an EV3. And we had this idea: why not use the EV3 with really long cables to run our ride? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Here we go. Um, well, this screen sharing thing is got it wacky. There we go. All right. All right. So here is so this was a close up of the Disney Castle. And uh, as the train would go by there on the right, um, you can see the float with Beauty and the Beast on it. They were actually on a little turntable, and they would spin around. And then um, there were went by. little flicker candles on the float. And yeah, all those candles were lit. The star so they would spin. They would spin as the as the the train would go by. Yeah, yeah there's a there's, sensor there's on a it. There's a sensor about two <laughs> feet on the track, two feet before that was looking up, and it would sense a color on the bottom of the car. And it would start two things. It would get them dancing and make a little like harp glissando. And then it would put a timer. And then by the time they got to the shark, the shark would go. Yes, yeah, so it was like two motors on one sensor. We were very excited about sensors. Um, and yeah. and yeah, like Richard said, there was a, a the fireworks, the little fireworks display flicker. back there in the back was all lit up. Um, and I don't know if you can see, let me see if I can pull in, because I don't unfortunately have any pictures of this, but I did want to show you. Oh, hi. <laughs> hi. Um, down here, you can see. So, so oh, yeah. Off to the sides, <laughs> we were, like, we're, you know, we started off doing um, arts and theater, and we both worked at, um, at uh, theme at parks. The parks. So, on the sides, we didn't want people to walk up to the side of the piece and not have anything to look at. So, we actually created a whole like backstage area with workers, and there was like a break room inside the mountain. Like, Costume it was a whole thing. <laughs> I'm just yeah. blown away that I'm just blown away that this is the first thing you like decided to show. Yeah. Oh, I had so another question. The diner. Yeah. How, 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 what's that? You know, I can see that the railroad track sort of has an incline to it yeah is that, that, was is that a true and problem yeah and, and and how did you how did you achieve that like what did you do because trains aren't always great about going up and down right or it was a nightmare we didn't know that you weren't supposed to do that like we've heard maybe go yeah. up a plate per track now but we went up like I don't know, something like this. And then someone gave us this piece of advice, right? This advice was use a little bit of, of um, graphite powder, right? Oh, uh, and so I didn't just put it on the axle. I put it on all the track and all the wheels, and then they just spun and nothing. <laughs> we had to like wipe it <laughs> off again. So did it go around? It yeah. did, yeah. We okay. ended up having to use, um, did we use, we didn't use two engines. No, not on that one. We just, it was a big problem getting it to go up. Well, yeah, that was, well, it was, yes, it was especially towards the end of the weekend after it had been running for like, you know, hours and hours and hours. It was having a little trouble getting up the hill. But I got to say, I, it, you know what it was is at the time, we didn't know what we were doing wasn't the thing you were supposed to do. So we did, so we, but just we did, did it, it anyway and it worked. So we just yeah, kind of went yeah. with it. Um, yeah. So it's <laughs> awesome. But um, yes, yeah, so I have another. I have another couple of photos of. So this was the diner, and you can see Richard lit it from the inside with like little diner lights. And I have a funny story. This the um, the roller skating waitress. I wanted her so bad for this piece, and I couldn't get her. She was really expensive at the time, and so I had just kind of made up my own. But I wasn't super happy with it. And I was sitting there, and I told a friend, and probably like right before the floor was about to open and the public was going to come in on oh, the first yeah. day, my friend comes running up to me. He's like, the guy over there, he's, he's selling the, the roller skating waitress for five bucks. And so like, oh. I ran over and grabbed and, and bought her and ended up putting her into the piece. So that was, um, is, that she, was wear cool. is she wearing a yellow? Yes. Oh. She's, she's wearing a yellow, a yellow top. Um, and she has a name tag. Her name is Tara. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. And she's got a little. Um, she's got pink roller skates, and she's got that great hair. And of course, the the glasses are my favorite. 
This awesome. was the first time I discovered that Flynn was a great casting director. I knew it from theater, but he basically casts all of our stories. He spends a lot of time with many figures. So this was our, um, here's where you can see a little bit of the, um, you can see the gold mine with the, with the skunk, which was really funny. That skunk had just come out in the CMFs and it was like, okay, so you saw how big it is and there's so much going on. So many people zeroed in on that skunk. Like, I don't yeah. know, how to, a skunk. I was like, how did you even see that? Like with all the other stuff going on. Um, and then if you look above the trees, um, you can move your cursor. Oh, yeah. that's right. If Up here, you see where those that like orange, green and dark green leaf are. That was the door that opened up and that the that the bear came out of. <laughs> so there's, there's a picture <laughs> under the tracks right as you go into the forest that would sense that and open the door. And then this was part of our um, the Hollywood sequence. We did um, the Wizard of Oz being filmed. Before the CMFs came out. This was before the CMFs came out. So we had to have them facing the wall because we couldn't show their faces. Oh. Um, so here, I'll show you. This is really funny. So um, that makes so much sense. Casting. So, the, so Dorothy is wearing Alice in Wonderland's dress with red okay. one by one plates for the shoes. And she's yep. wearing the um, Native American ladies pigtails. Oh, man. And the scarecrow is wearing Harry Potter's sorting hat. Yeah. The Tin Man had like a horrifying robot face on the other side. <laughs> and then the lion um, is used, I used friend's hair for the lion's mane because I thought it kind of looked like that curly hair like he had. And then I used yeah. one of the weird elephant trunks. And you can see, if you look close, the, the minifigure is actually separated like in the middle barely, and yeah. the tail end. But no one noticed. They noticed the skunk, but nobody noticed, you know. That's that. amazing. <laughs> it's amazing. And to say that that was before, did you redo that scene after the C the CMFs came out? No. I, I did. No, 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 we didn't. Not this one, but we have one of oh, the few things we that. saved from this piece is Oz. We have the little micro Oz in okay. our room. Yeah, I have micro Oz, and I did reuse micro Oz in this piece now this now this is met much much later this was probably last year Where's oh that? no i don't seem to see it oh maybe i didn't put it in here that's okay you brought a lot of other photos to share yeah so anyway that was um that was our very first thing that we brought ever into public and we and ended what up happened? what did we do we won best in show and people's choice this at the first year we ever brought something and it was shocking we were, <laughs> we were just we were like, over the moon oh, we were so excited um yeah. that was really that was really a lot of fun so then um the following year we were like okay well we, let's do something a little harder and not wide maybe tall and a little bit harder yeah so that's when um that's when treasure of the snake queen happened and that is um i can show you a picture of it and then I have a video that we can share, but I'll show you the video first. While you're while you're pulling that up, I just wanted to say before I think before the stream started, we got a four dollar ninety nine cent super chat from Melissa. I think it's oh, Melissa. Awesome. Thanks, Melissa, Melissa. Melissa, let me know if I'm pronouncing your your last name wrong. Uh, I'm going to say Mayette. Um, Melissa, huge supporter of, of Boone Builds. Um, and so thank you very much. That super chat came in before we even started. Um, oh, so I wanted to mention cool. it and now it's, it's too far up the thing for me to be able to go up and highlight it. But, um, thank you so much, Melissa. We hope you're still watching. We hope you're having fun tonight. All oh, right. I, wanted, I wasn't looking at this chat, but I wanted to say thank you to everybody for, um, all of the kind words about the, um, about the, uh, the piece. I'm glad you really liked it. Thank you. Um, so yeah, so this was our second outing. <laughs> this is this is about four and a half feet tall. And so this was six months of work. We did about two months of design and four months of uh, actual of assembly. actual assembly. And this was animated. It told a story. It had sixty three LEDs in it. Yeah, it, um, and again, um, you can't see it now. You'll be able to see it when we um, when we show the video. But uh, we utilized our our nephew's trains uh, again, the nine volt trains. Yep. And what we where it all started was, I had this idea 
um, again, we come from theater, and, and I was we also, love animation. And we love animation, and I was the theme that year was animation, and I was thinking, um, wow, it would be so cool. What if we did? Um, one of the things that always made me laugh was, and actually, if you can put it back on on uh, on us, Spoon, that would be awesome. Sorry, I, 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 no, I just wanted to, I just sure wanted to show video. something. So I thought, you know, like especially like in the Scooby Doo cartoons where they would all be running kind of in place, and yeah. the background would just be kind of going behind them. And I was like, well, what if we built a like town buildings mm -hmm. on the train cars? And then we had our characters tip tip topping in place like they're walking, and then the train goes by in the background, and it makes it look like they're walking past this sort of moving village. And that that was the start of the whole thing. And that right? was sort of, yeah, and that was the beginning of the whole thing. And then it just like spun completely out of control. <laughs> <laughs> we were inspired by um, by which castle? Uh, Maleficent's castle Maleficent's from. Castle. Um, from uh, from Sleeping Beauty, and then yeah. we also were big Dungeons and Dragons players, and uh, we wanted to do um, something like a Dungeons and Dragons adventure where that where these same adventure party have adventures going up the mountain. And then, of course, also a big inspiration to us was Cuckoo Clocks. It's a big surprise, right? <laughs> <laughs> um, I've always been fascinated by the the especially like um, at Disneyland, it's Small World, the big clock that opens up and all of the figures come out and move around, and also um, really inspired by the windows at, of toy stores at Christmas that always have right. the animated bits, and and Disneyland often has them on the Main Street stores. Yeah, so that's yeah. Where, that's kind of where all this was inspired from. So we um, had this interesting thing that happened uh, where I. I had seen the um, the uh, sorry I can never remember the full name of this. It's the the name of this mock. The oh, full name of the mock. Snake Queen. Treasure of the Snake Queen. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's correct. I'm always like Snake Queen, Snake Mountain. We call it that half the time. Yeah, Treasure Snake of the Queen. Snake Queen. Sorry. So um, I was I was certainly familiar with Treasure Treasure of the Snake Queen as an incredible experience on YouTube, right? Um, because mm -hmm. uh, there were, I think that you had a video out and Beyond the Brick had a video out, right? Yep. From, yeah. um, from probably summer, some, oh, tested. Oh yeah, yeah crazy. So um, uh, I knew this mock and I knew it was incredible. And I think I was probably familiar with the fact that when I was interviewing you for the, um, for the for the Wolfman clock that I that you were connected to this mock, but right. I had forgotten about all of that by the time we got to Lego Masters. And <laughs> we, was, we went out to dinner, right? We went out to dinner like episode. I want to say episode five or six. We went out to dinner sometime, and um, you guys said something about Treasure of the Snake Queen, and I was like, literally, I was like, wait a second, that. You guys built that? that was you, and um, and you guys were like, yeah. And I was like, oh my gosh, that thing was so amazing, and and that inspired builds that I have done, you know, since then, and did not execute nearly as well as you did with with these. I, I'm curious, how how much time do you think you put into California Dreaming and the Snake Queen? Do you do you have any idea? Well, when did we start California Dreaming? Was in we we did California. a design, and then there was construction on our house, and it all came to a stop. Oh, geez, that was right? terrible. So I'd say what, like four about four months, four total. months, and then and then six for Snake Queen. Yeah, there was easily two months of just prototyping mechanisms and coming up with the design, and then we kind of went and did our own stuff and commented on each other's parts of it. Right? Yeah, it was um, it was a it was a long process, <laughs> of course, but. Uh, but yeah, six months was probably for that. And, you know, I would say that there was probably at least a month of that time mm -hmm. was spent, like collectively, was mm. spent just troubleshooting all of the motors. Because oh, yeah. there were, we had two EV3 brains yeah. running that thing. We had right. eight motors and seven sensors. And while we really try and focus on making simple mechanisms, if you add that many simple mechanisms, there's so many unforeseen yeah. consequences. And, and did you have the EV3 synced? 
we tried that, you know, and and the funny thing was the report we were able to. They were synced. They just weren't um, daisy chained. So you're supposed oh, okay. to be able to daisy chain them together, but it it just didn't work. Didn't no, it um, the sensor reporting when they were daisy chained, yeah. they didn't know what each other were doing. So we mm. broke it at the bottom of the castle. And and interestingly, well, and you'll see it when when we show you the video. But there were there was also sound and lights with this. Yeah. So we were actually running three separate, we were running one uh, EV3 brain for the bottom half, one EV3, EV3 brain for the top half, and then an Arduino microcontroller that ran all the sound and the lights that kind of ran alongside of that, but not- They um, never touched. Yeah, they never touched. So you sure. just hope that they would stay in sync. And they did about wow. 95, 98% of the time. Yeah. Okay. What, are you going to get the video ready now? Yeah, let yeah. me get the video I'm, I'm ready gonna, for you. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to talk just quickly about um, yeah. what we got from Patrick White, 999 Super Chat. Thank you so much. Patrick oh, says, cool. thank you for the wonderful distraction during these stressful times. My daughter and I loved watching all of you on Lego mm -hmm. Masters keep building amazing things. Thank you so much, Patrick. And thank you. Please tell your daughter that uh, we are rooting for her and that we hope she builds some awesome stuff. And you. Um we also just had uh, Brandon says, uh, ba -ba -ba, "Thank you for getting, uh, thank you for getting me back into Lego. I enjoyed all over your builds on Lego Masters. Uh, oh, I enjoyed no. all of your builds on Lego Masters. Definitely has helped me get through Corona. So Brandon Moyes, thank you so much with five dollars of support for the live stream. We really, really appreciate that and." Um, it's because of you that uh, that I get to keep doing this stuff, um, and uh, and thank you, Flynn and Richard, for being an amazing part of this story. And and uh, it's been a wild ride. All right, absolutely. Okay, I think I'm ready for this. I've never shared a thing on a video before, so we'll see. I mean, we did earlier, but you know, let's see. Okay. So one one thing I have to say about this is this is this is a video from YouTube, right? Yes. So I might I might get into a little bit of uh of um I might have a little bit of a problem with this not getting flagged by YouTube's content thing. So we need to like make up some like <laughs> like extra background music. Oh well we uh, I think it's okay. It's all classical music, so we've okay. never had a okay. problem with it. All right, but, cool. Yeah, it should be all all uh, uh royalty free music. But it's gonna recognize this video as whoever this video is oh, to. Okay. Um, it's not a big deal. It's not a big deal. Fingers crossed. Oh, it's awesome. Can you hear it's the Barely. Yes. Okay. Turn here now. Oh, and the so they walk by. They walk by. Oh, it's so good, you guys. And then they go through the spooky forest with the spooky eyes coming out. <laughs> Oh, it's so amazing. I want you to talk at some point a little bit about, um, you know, how you chose this sort of like band of characters. You know what I mean? Sure. sure. Um, we had black so light in this section here. In the little picture in picture, you have um, like a camera moving all the way up the, the building. Yeah, yeah. It shows me that they're the all other. connected going. Yeah. Up. Raw, scary dragon. Oh, so cool. Oh, my goodness. Scary People dragon. Scared. People would actually legitimately get jump, scared jump when it came back. You'd hear an intake of breath. It's like, <laughs> oh, you guys, it's so amazing. Thank you. Every this bit of it is like right here. This is literally the kind of thing, and then they're like battling. Yeah. It's amazing. It's the it, when I saw this, I was like, this is the kind of thing that you, the kind of experience that you see in uh, Disneyland, right? Um, the, the kind of thought that goes into creating this kind of stuff. And, and of course, if you're on a ride at Disneyland, it's like life, life size stuff. But this, it's just, it's, it's incredible, you guys. It's, you couldn't you. have said a nicer thing. We're yeah. so inspired by the Imagineers. And we also, yeah. and so, like we did with California Dreaming, we didn't want, like, if somebody was waiting to see the show, we didn't want them to get bored. So we decorated the sides and this was like our good side with all the animals yeah. and fairies and owls and and nymphs and things and then this little guy skinny dipping that was our little <laughs> joke. um guard palace and then on the other side we had the evil side with, with all the, the bad kids and the skunk again and this like purple waterfall coming out of a skull um 
Yeah, that was us putting it together. And I'll tell you the horrifying story about what happened. I'm sure you've heard, heard this before, but oh, let's That's unshare that now before it goes away. There we go. Thanks. <laughs> yeah, no problem. Um, so one oh. of the before Lego Masters, this oh, was. No, hang on, hang on, hang on. No, 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 stop. Just mute. Mute. There we there go. There we go. <laughs> so before we were on Lego Masters, what you're about to hear is the scariest Lego moment we had. Oh, yeah. So you saw Richard handing me the, the Snake Queen part of it. So we hadn't uh, yet at that point been able to get all of the kinks worked out of it. We did eventually when we when we went to, when we took it to Bricks LA. Yeah, we made version 2.0 of a bunch of different mechanics. So there was so that you saw that top turntable thing. Right. Happen. Yeah. And the thing with that top turntable was it was um, a turntable with a turntable inset inside of the middle of it with a second turntable also inset in it that with, was connected with by chains. And sensors up inside that, It too. was so crammed in there. It was crazy. So and what about the Snake Queen? So we, he's, so we, in, if it got messed up, we had to take the Snake Queen off to fix it. Well, right. this was about, like, again, like two minutes before the public is about to get let in. Oh, man. We're trying to fix it. I, I pick it up. And it literally shatters in my oh. hand, like shatters. We're talking into like 200 pieces. A million pieces. A bunch of pieces. And I was, of course, I was shattered. I was like, what is happening? Like the public's about to come in. And this was on day two. And the crazy thing was like the paper had been there, like a bunch of media had been there. And so they were putting it out. And I had people coming up to me going, oh, we saw this on the news. And oh, we saw this. And so I was like, oh, it has to be ready. It has to be ready. And I fortunately- You're Sweating bullets. Not joking, like sweating so hard. And very fortunately for, um, very fortunately for us, um, I had a picture of it on my phone and I was able to reconstruct it like- and oh. it up there right at the last minute and fortunately yeah. we were um at the very very end of the aisle yeah, by the so exit. by the time people actually made it to us it was about 15 minutes <laughs> after the beginning and i was able to get it together but man that was horrifying <laughs> yeah oh, so orange bricks and uh, benjamin dury are asking uh how does the snake spin Oh, oh, oh okay well that was so it was a turn it was just a, a giant turntable yeah. And the the giant turntable is what turned the room around. It was on one of those big, you know, the yellow, uh, was it from a hauler loader? Giant. Yeah, gear. yeah, those big yellow gears, yeah. One right side up, and then like 50 one-by-one one round tiles, and another one yeah. upside down made a big turntable. Yeah. It, as long as it was perfectly balanced. Right. Oh my yeah. So we had, so there was that. And then in the middle of that turntable was a second turntable and that's what held the snake queen. So she yeah, would just, crazy. yeah, she would spin on a little separate. Yeah. Piece, and then the party amazing. was a third one attached to that with a chain. We just, we didn't know what we shouldn't have been able to do. <laughs> no, that's, that's, that's what this, that's what makes this stuff beautiful. Right. That's what's amazing about this. Um, we used the same. Uh, we used that same mechanism in the base of our droid on uh, on the droid challenge in Lego. Oh, oh yeah, we yeah. had. But they were black. Um, in the in the brick pit, we had with black, and it's those giant quarter. You get a quarter of the gear, and you put yeah. four of them together to make a to make a gear that's about this big, and you can lay the little round tiles in there. I actually I got that idea from my friend Ryan. He uh, he built this big. Um, uh, this giant Lego Batman Batmobile vehicle rotisserie thing. Oh uh, yeah, <laughs> use that in the center. Um, but awesome, cool. All yeah, right, it was definitely so. So then, so like talking they about like that one too. Yeah, right? continuing the journey. That was our second year bringing something, and we won best in show and people's choice again for a, a, the second year in a row. And that was when we were kind of like, oh, maybe maybe there's something to this. Like maybe we actually kind of know what we're doing. And then it yeah. wasn't too long, you know, too much later that we start, you know, the whole Lego Masters thing uh, happened. And I'm pretty sure that having that Snake Queen video online was a big help. Like I was, <laughs> they, you know, yeah. a lot of people yeah. got to see it. So it's awesome. Now that makes me think like, could you imagine what all of us could have done 
like I'm thinking about the very first challenge on Lego Masters. You know, you guys you guys built the Spooky Town, is that what it was called? Or yep, was yeah. it Spooky Town? We built Timber Town. And I feel like, could you imagine how incredible those builds would have been if we'd had like a week to work on them? Yeah, you know yeah. what I mean? Or or let alone, you know, we talk about building these things that take us months, you know, before we go to a go to a cha- uh, to a convention. And those challenges, man, on the show were just just insane. Um, yeah, it's something I've thought about time and again. Is it's really hard to tell watching the show just how hard it is to do lights and mechanics and a design and troubleshooting all within those little bits of time, and then memorize the memorize the whole story so that you can tell it to them when they come around to look at it <laughs> and make it big. Yeah, yeah. And make it epic. Make it. Uh, you really want to take it to the next level. Yeah. It's, we, we joke around all the time about what, uh, you know, those things that the Brickmaster said over and over again, like Danny and I will say them to each other in the house or, you know, um, responding to people that are doing, build, uh, doing my build camp right now. Um, and um, it's always like, you know, make it epic. Uh, yeah. <laughs> you did this thing and it really took it to the next level. I feel like that was something that Jamie Berard said all the time yes <laughs> it took it to the next level but um it stuck with me and and i don't know that this could apply with something like snake queen um but it uh when they talked about every brick having a purpose and there not being any extra bricks that's you hard know, <laughs> that, i mean when you're building something yeah. that organic it's hard like with with your um ewok adventure land you know it's hard to say but i didn't ever feel with those big pieces like there was a brick out of place that stuck yeah. with me yeah, yeah, that's that's interesting. Okay, and, so and yet, actually, I don't mean to interrupt you, but no. isn't it funny? Have you set pieces up more than once, and you end up with like a hundred extra pieces, and you're like, "Where was this?" <laughs> I yeah, I I don't um, I don't know. I think one one thing that I have never done as well as you guys do, and I I would like to do better at and i think it's the kind of thing that you just need tons of extra parts for is that the landscaping and making you know i i have shown huge layouts that just look too like too much like they're just sitting on base plates you know what i mean and um and that's Mm -hmm. always been a challenge for me to like overcome and 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 for me i think so much of what i try to build is more about like overcoming a technical challenge or like like <laughs> turning an idea into something that exists in the real world. So I don't always push it to like the next level on on those you know those the details the skin right and and part of what makes the snake queen look so amazing is that every inch of it or you talk about um, California dreaming and. Uh, how uh, you've got these areas around the sides where it's like, you know, people are there like doing the bat behind the scenes stuff, right? It's not just the side of the mock, it's more of the mock. And and I don't always do an expert job, particularly when I'm by myself, um, at, at really finessing and, and refining those parts of a build. Um, you know, luckily Mark was better at landscape than I am, um, you know, so we made a good team on Lego Masters. And I think... Um, you know, for like, uh, for uh, Ewok Adventureland, Perry had done that whole huge section at the front. I think it was um, one, two, three, four. Was it three, four? I think it was four by, so he had eight uh, 48 by 48 at the front of Ewok Adventureland. And mm-hmm. he, he really set the bar high for, you know, just how how organic and detailed that, that landscape looked. Um, but uh, you guys certainly knocked it out of the park on on both of those builds that you've shown us. Um, Thank you. Yeah. I think Flynn pushes harder. Flynn pushes harder on landscaping than I do. We both love landscaping. Yeah. Um, but while I'm troubleshooting mechanisms and really trying to make gears not jump, Flynn is is just detailing detailing on on the landscaping. Well, I think um, I think. I think the detailing is so important because it's one of those things where even, you know, like the skunk is a really good example. Like I didn't yeah. have to put that in there. I could have just right. left it out, but I put it in there not thinking anyone would notice. And it was like the thing that people, you know, like one of the big things that people noticed out of that. 
And, and I thought that was so funny. And I also think that our, I mean, we say this a lot, but our experience in theater really speaks to a lot of our design. And we really, um, we really thought about with both California Dreamin' and um, Snake Queen, we talked a lot about sight lines, which mm. if you've ever done theater, you know, it's like, if, you're, if you, you put your theater set up, you need to go out in the audience and go sit at the very, very side and make sure that you can't see like where the set ends and where the gap is in the, you know, in between the set and the backstage. I don't want to see a hinge or the back of a plate. Yeah. So that's where we, um, that's kind of where we got that like, oh, well, people are going to be seeing it from all sides. So we should probably, you know, decorate it. To right. Look yeah. That's, that's, I, it's great. And I'm glad you think about it. I don't always, but <laughs> Um, Molly says, uh, this is making me regret not going to Bricks by the Bay in the last five years. Must go back. <laughs> yeah. It's um, a good one. I definitely, I definitely <laughs> want to go back. Well, uh, I want to, I saw Lego Matic in the chat was asking about how we, um, did the timing for the movement of the snake queen and the, um, the party when they were battling each other. Um, and so if you, I, unfortunately I don't have anything to test show you on, but if you can imagine, these are two gears, right? One bigger one, one small one. They're facing up. The snake queen is on this gear. The party is on this gear. And there was a chain that attached the two of them together. So the motor was on the snake queen. So when she moved, it would pull the party's gear at the same time. And so they would move back and forth. And what we ended up doing is it was looking to like, eh, 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 eh. so we actually in the programming of the EV3, built in some randomness so if uh, you watch it they actually kind of go part of the way and then more the other way and then back more the other way and it's a very more sort of a random movement yeah and they're and because the gears are two different sizes they're also moving at different speeds but yeah they're always they're always going to stay you in know sync. in sync as long yeah. as the gears aren't going past a 365 rotation and exactly and, and advancing sort of it stays anyway oh no yeah. and believe me when you're testing that stuff happens and you're like oh yeah. wait yeah. no stop and you're like yeah. going for the stop button yeah. Yeah. Things, like, yeah. pieces are flying off it yeah. would be an awesome tip for anyone who's dealing with um rope either um either powered up or ev3 with sensors mm. color sensors don't push back right a color sensor there's no contact so you can sense it and it doesn't mess up your mechanic, but we use uh, sensors and it messed stuff up. It again. was really hard because the touch sensor pushes back. Right. Yeah. That's crazy. I, I never thought about that. I've, I've only used color sensors um, so and I think they're, they're awesome. But So speaking of um, Ewok Adventureland, oh. <laughs> I have it queued up here. If you, if we'd like to show it. So this, this was, um, this was after our first project after Lego Masters. And we got home and, and I know all of us felt really burned out right after we got back. It was just like, oh man, I can't find the creativity. I'm having such a hard time. And then um, we had kind of jokingly talked about like some ideas and stuff when we were on Lego Masters. And then Boone was like, hey, do you got, would you guys want to work on this with us. And we were like, yes, yes, please. I need something, some kind of inspiration. It's like, well, how about, um, so I made this theme park and I want a big sign for it. And kind of the Las Vegas sign is sort of the inspiration. So we kind of went with a Las Vegas meets Disneyland meets the Flintstones kind of <laughs> feeling. Yeah. 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 Um, and then we, we put it atop the, after, after much drama, got it up atop of the, um, of the of the piece and then we were able to um fortunately work alongside you boone and perry i know who's in the chat hi perry um to make this um amazing amazing piece so i'll go ahead and run this it's pretty short yeah so one thing you got to know is that uh perry our lovely moderator and he was in season one of uh a full spotlight live Perry built all the cool stuff down at the bottom with all that great, um, you know, landscaping and the rides. I thought and it was lighting too. I thought it was so brilliant. Like there was just so many, like just perfectly perfect parts. Of and this. your monorail. And your monorail is amazing. And, and the sign at the top, the sign built by Flynn and Richard was just the, 
what do you is what, what's the French word that means like the the uh, yes, the resistance? <laughs> yeah, is that is that what I'm looking for? It's just the oh, that tie fighter. The, um, the thing that pulls it all together, the thing that makes you understand what it is, you know, something. it's got that, oh, it's just incredible. I'm so glad you showed this video. Um, and well, we had, to, I don't know if you, I don't know if anyone noticed, but um, the uh, the music playing there was, I, I found as many different versions of the Ewok <laughs> song, you know, the, the yum, yum, eat, yum, yum, yum. From the, end of the original, um, the, the original version of Return of the Jedi. Uh, I've I went out to the internet and I found as many different recordings of that song as possible. And some of them are weird, some of them are random. So like there's one that's like a guy just like on a on a on an ocarina and it's like <laughs> nine, nine of him playing the ocarina. And, and I think he was actually doing the the newer version of the song. But but the one you were listening to during that lights out uh, was this like this like soft like piano. <laughs> version of the Ewok song and it was just I it was it was lovely it was it was so much funny that was a good Ewok voice too but yeah way. nicely done oh, was it Bonnie glasses lags what are we having a uh oh uh, we having a, a lag issue <laughs> um, it probably means probably means someone inside started streaming a, a movie or something um yeah someone said someone said yub nub dubstep so maybe it was a <laughs> Well, Jeff Jeff said Boone nailing the Ewoks, so we must not be having too many problems. No. Um, I'm hearing I'm hearing you guys just fine, so hopefully our output is looking good. Um, yeah, so that was just uh, it was so much fun. I love collaborating. You guys just dove in head first, but but you were the the first conversation. Can we talk about the the very first conversation we had about it? Yeah, yeah sure. We were, you guys were going to build a, a Wookie bar. <laughs> oh yeah we're still gonna do that we're doing oh, okay it. great great years yeah we just we had this idea of you know there's there's so many bars that cater to so many different specific types um you know and we just thought it'd be so funny if it was a you know a wookie bar and it was like all wookies but with some ewoks and then we have the the big wampa big fig and like he's going to yeah. be a bartender yeah. and they're all just hanging out awesome. <laughs> and my idea was to do a kind of um like a, a you know i love doing these kind of um when i make my vignettes i love sort of doing these like one frame comics mm -hmm. that have like co you know like like comedy to them and i kind of wanted to have um, like Luke walking in the door of the bar, like looking shocked, and like everybody has like turned around and looked at him. Like suddenly, Luke realized he walked into the wrong bar. <laughs> oh yeah, that's good. That's great. I I, well, I love it. I you know it, that reminds me of um, there was this thing at Bricks Cascade where uh, we we got a we got a theme award for. Ewok Adventure Land. Yeah. And we won People's Choice. Yep. yep. For Ewok Adventure Land. Um, and from the theme coordinators, there was almost this like, we had a hard time. Like we were really torn because they, as, as theme awards, they really like to give it to stuff that is very true to like the canon of, you know, the, the, the films or the, the various official Star Wars things. I love Star Wars. I have almost zero interest in building replicas of stuff from Star Wars because it yeah. is just done over and over and over again. And for people who love it, I'm, okay, I'm going to look into the camera. For people who love building the replicas, please keep going. It's, it's they're <laughs> awesome. They're amazing. It's just not the part of it that captures my interest. I love mashing up the Star Wars stuff with like something hilarious. Like, and, and, and I don't think it's, you know, the Ewoks, Ewoks are weird, right? Like <laughs> if, if, if you could have imagined Ewoks before Return of the Jedi, they would have seemed outlandish, right? And then suddenly they're very much in the, in the, the Star Wars universe. So it just seems to me like, you know, and, I, and I, I was doing some reading about Ewoks when I was thinking about this. And one of the, it was like in some sort of in Star Wars encyclopedia. And it actually said that, um, Ewoks, you know, are sort of like all about their their um, family. They're all about their tribe, their uh, their religion. Um, um, but they're really good at making stuff 
out of you know the raw materials that they find and they're actually they they have a um uh you know a, a giftedness or an eptness to figuring out how to use technology when they come across it um and and so it just it makes sense to me like the end of the battle on on endor and there's going to be all there's got to be all this Im imperial junk left over right and what are the ewoks going to do with it make a make a fun place for the galaxy to celebrate uh you know the the victory of the rebellion but any anyway <laughs> So, no, it, it was has, it was so fun and you know i want to say too thank you so much for giving us that challenge we talk about challenges right like yeah. i know you do it on your show on lego masters we did challenges the fact that you asked us to make a sign rather than something that was in our comfort zone made oh. us really push it's like well what are we gonna do we don't right. you know and we had to really think about it and and just do something we had never done before well and yeah. then the two, like the Ewoks, they also their their work. I love the Ewoks. I love their work. Uh, their their um, but their work is very like Professor from Gilligan's Island kind of right. Like it's got that yeah. it's got that whole vibe. Like I'm gonna make right. you know, right. a, lot, a lot of coconuts or whatever. Yeah, but, Corey um, Corey says this is totally in universe to me. And so. by the way, I have I have the tr the trophy that you were speaking of earlier. Yeah, yeah, um, there it I is. Love this. It's it is one of my treasured trophies um yeah i love this a so lot that's so that's that's the theme award right yep 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 yeah i i have the um i have the people's choice award at home and and we, people other perry um what did you take home perry took perry took something home right like one of somebody built like a miniature build i think it was um it felt like a micro version i thought yeah, it, it was in was it well mike built one later <laughs> but later. that's right um i think I it was i think it was simon simon lou Oh, right. participated in the um the master build i don't think we call it master build at at bricks cascade the um the freestyle build so yeah. simon Lou went and participated in the freestyle build and he built our mock for yeah. his competition as the freestyle <laughs> build and it was like this big and i think that's what perry took on but anyway, you'll, awesome. have to, you'll have to correct me if i'm wrong about that perry <laughs> um so speaking of things that you do in your show and things that i do in my show should we do the secret should we do the secret uh oh, sure yeah, absolutely i think we're ready i know yeah i think okay. we're ready all right here we go everybody here it is um the first time you'll ever see this on on boon builds and maybe the last time we'll see who knows <laughs> it is It's Logan Cookie Time. I've stolen a segment from Real Yay! Logan. This is our dog Logan. Here, I'm gonna I'm gonna full screen you guys so everyone can get a look. get a good look at Logan. Oh, oh. You catch so cute. Did you catch it? A very silly thing that happens on our show every day at 10:45. And um, yeah, it's, one become, more here, it's become little. a regular feature. Oh, and <laughs> thanks for coming on, Logan. All right, everybody. If you enjoyed Logan cooking time, Logan Logan cooking. If you enjoyed Logan cookie time, and you haven't gone over to Tricky Bricks channel to subscribe, uh, you should because uh, they do they do that every day. Um, <laughs> along with all the other awesome stuff they do, it's all the other crazy stuff. stuff. Well, you know, hey, what I look, um, uh, Jermaine's here. Oh, hey, cool. Jermaine. Jermaine. Yeah. Yeah. The... Bricks. BX Bricks. I don't see him. Where is he? I'm not finding uh, it. It's okay. I believe you. I'll take you. I'll take your word for it. Oh, is it on? Uh, is it on Facebook? No, I'm seeing it here. Oh, yes, he's on Facebook. Yep, yeah, yep. awesome. BX, there he is, Jermaine. Thank you for joining us tonight, man. Um, also over here, we've got a. Uh, uh, I'll just I'll shout out some other people. Aqua Mike TV. Thank you. Aqua Mike was the the first person that that went to this link to start getting ready for this live stream tonight, and it was like two hours before the start of the stream. <laughs> awesome. Thank you, Aqua Mike. You're always here. Thank you so much. Thanks for coming back, Corey Kinnick. You're a great uh, supporter of Boone Builds. Alyssa Brickaroo Bonsai, uh, Alyssa Jeff McElwee. I always have to say his name, Jeff McElwee, because I said his name wrong for like five weeks. Uh, we got Remy Baker, Insane Lego Fan, Orange Bricks is still here, Marilyn Parmley, Hay Films, Joe Dorsey, Awesome the Lego Guy. Thank you so much. You're all so wonderful. Um, well, we do have a lot of crossover. It sounds like. Does, our, sounds does like it? Yeah. Yeah. So maybe, maybe just. 
none of none of my followers are watching. All of yours came. <laughs> no, uh, I think it's. I think there's well, a. Yeah, I think there's heavy crossover. <laughs> it's fun. Oh, oh, please. While we're while we're talking about that, um, do you guys want to talk a little bit about your uh, your subscriber drive? Oh sure. So oh, yeah. we um yeah somehow like you said we were we're hitting we're about to do our hundredth episode. And so we're gonna do a couple of giveaways, sort of like tricky bricks, like gift packs, whatever, as a, as giveaways. But we're also trying to get the two thousand subscribers. So um, we are fortunately um, we have this. Once we hit two thousand subscribers, we're going to give away the Monkey King uh, Warrior Mech from the Monkey Kid collection. It's an amazing set, um, and we, we built it up. It's super fun. Yeah, yeah, we ended up with a with a an extra copy. So we're going to be giving it away once we hit 2000 subscribers. So that's our exciting. <laughs> that's, <laughs> awesome. Boy. that's awesome. I just put a link. I just put a link to their uh, channel awesome. in the, in the, uh, the chat. So uh, if you're going to follow it now, do the right click, open in a new tab. Cause we don't want to lose you from this stream. We no, right, exactly. stay here. No, no, no. here. Here. Because nothing, nothing's going on there live right now, but it will be Not tomorrow at 10 a.m. Pacific. <laughs> yep, tomorrow 10 a.m. Yeah. We on Fridays. So we were talking before. Every week we do a different challenge with our viewers, and uh, <clears throat> every Friday we do a slideshow of everybody's entries, and we talk about them and look at them. It's turned into a regular Friday thing, and those are turning out to be some mm -hmm. of our largest watched days. Actually, are the days that we do the slideshows. So. It's also awesome. got me building a lot more because I take these challenges that we do and, you know, we try to um, build them. Yeah, if we can. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> time. I know. I'm going to stay up late tonight building. Awesome. I don't know how you guys do that every week. I've been doing some challenges, but they've, they've ended up being like once a month it, at best. Yeah. Um, because I just, I, I, I just, um, I have a hard time uh, collecting and getting through all of the content, all of the submissions. Yeah, I, yeah. And I, I think I, go ahead. Oh, I was just gonna say, it, it's a lot. It does, doesn't it seem like to you, I don't know, we've been staying home since March and it seems like we're busier now than before. Yeah, right? Right? So much absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. But, but I think, um, uh, I mean, also too, we don't get the level of, of people contributing that you do. Yeah. <laughs> like, I know okay. you hundreds we, we get we, we have an average, amazing dedicated yeah, we have audience an amazing dedicated audience we usually average about 25 to 30 uh entries each time and then we did um amazingly it was crazy but yeah. um and i thought this would have been honestly one of our lower attended ones but we did um a rebrick challenge where mm. we had everybody buy the street the city street sweeper which is like oh. a ten dollar set and if people weren't able to i mean this is how great our community is we um i had a couple of members of our one of our viewers email us and say hey if anybody can't afford the set i will send you some money and then you can ship them the set wow. so we were able to ship some people sets and we ended up with about like um, more than 40. more than 40 entries which for us was is huge so um yeah the, and that was probably the the most we've done and we have it down and actually thanks to you we started collecting information over Google Forms because gosh, so that makes better. it so much easier. Yeah, well, good, good. Um, okay, cool. So uh, let me ask you this. This it reminds me of another thing that I want to ask you about. And and um, I, you guys are so amazing. I love you so much. Uh, I'm so glad we that I can think back to a time during Lego Masters when you were like, Boone, should we try this YouTube thing? Because I feel like you just, you guys <laughs> just, you just, you just like hit it and you're just like, you're just running with it and you've got all these awesome ideas and you're doing some things better than I am. And, and, um, uh, I just, I'm glad that I have been allowed to participate in this journey with you. I, I appreciate it. Well, you've been a, a great inspiration. You yeah. are so generous and, and, um, just fun about everything. And, and, um, thank you for all your help in it. And we really, we were like, what would we even do? We didn't even know what we had we no idea what we would do. Way. And I remember like, and Mel was just, he's like, you'll find something. <laughs> he's like, yeah. just, yeah. if you feel like doing it, <laughs> go do it. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. So I really attribute a lot of what we're doing now to, um, to you and Mel and also Julian um, Smith, the Brick Smith. 
um, he was the first stream that we ever were on that what, you know, like first official stream. We enjoyed it so much. And he's the one that turned us on to, that's how we met Moto. And um, it really like between the three of you really kind of like brought us into the, the Lego YouTuber family. So that's awesome. Uh, it's so much fun. I'm so glad we're doing it. Uh, okay. So my question for you is, mm -hmm. yeah. Um, and, uh, uh, I, I feel like I'm a little bit like, how do I say this? I am a little more fringy in your community than, than some of your most dedicated viewers, right? So there's, there are things that they understand that I might not because, oh, because no. I'm, I'm, I'm so often like working hard um, on my content when you guys are live. Um, yeah. So I, I don't catch you, but that's, I'm trying to, I'm trying to find a, a, a nice, um, not so self-incriminating way of saying, I don't watch your live stream as often as a lot of the people who are watching this live stream, watch your <laughs> live stream. Um, so I'm sorry for that. And I'm, I'm glad that we get to collaborate in the ways that we do. Um, but there's this thing that you've got going on and, um, and I think it's brilliant. And I don't completely understand it yet. So I'm, I want to I want to just kind of pick your brain a little bit of, uh, about it a little bit. Right. Tricky lug, tricky lug. When oh. did tricky lug start? Is it just is it a general term that you use for all of the people that are sort of part of your community? They created yeah, they it. They right? created that actually. Yeah, that was our community came up with that, and um, they've run with it. And there's a Discord server for uh, it's called Tricky Lug After Dark. And oh my goodness, uh, they've really picked it up and ran with it. There's some really amazing things. And so now, whenever uh, people do the build challenges, if they post them on Instagram, they tag them as Tricky Lug. And yeah, mm. just kind of we're not an officially recognized lug. Sure. Sure. But yeah. but yeah, we're kind of a like we have we have lug meetings four nights a week or four days <laughs> a week four days a week now, right? <laughs> with, with other activities outside. Yeah, it just kind of came. It, it's and, I mean, and I'm sure you know, right? Like the um, uh, you you know that like just like weird things spring up, <laughs> you know, <laughs> like, yeah. like the weird. Hey, just like weird jokes and weird in things that that spring up and yeah so like tricky lug was definitely one of those and we have um some of the people who uh participate in our challenges have now created their own character mythologies within their oh, yeah. their build so like we have one uh, naomi Brickanista, i think you know naomi yeah I'm not sure. um she um every time we have a build challenge she has created a character called super sewer baby who is like her um like superhero character and super sewer baby is in every single one of her builds no matter what the challenge is has something to do with super sewer baby and then other people in the chat started getting their own baby characters and now they have the super baby justice league and they all have different baby characters that they do like it's it's, it's such an awesome community. I'm like really, really happy and proud to uh, be the weird gay Lego dads of this like crazy, <laughs> this is like crazy community. It's pretty great. Yeah, awesome. I I, I love you guys. Uh, okay, so uh, do you have any other builders you'd like to talk about? We could we could go to cool stuff we found online, or we can skip cool stuff we found online and go straight to Q and A. Oh no. I need a second, but I mean, of course, you know, Moto is a huge, huge inspiration for us. And I think yeah. we introduced you, actually it was on your stream and you were like, who can we get on the stream? And I remember just saying like, Moto, you need to get Moto. And Moto was like in bed on his phone and had, like <laughs> had to run out of bed down to, you know, like in the, in the dark, uh, quietly not to wake the family to go like come be on the stream. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, so yeah, definitely. Um, his, his stuff is amazing. Um, yeah. let me see if I can, I want to look up something really quick. Well, there's right, more... right. can I play, can I play the, the, can I play the, uh, segment intro? Cause this one does have a song. Oh please, yeah, for do. sure. Please. Here we go. Everyone. It's time for cool stuff. We found online. Cool stuff. We found on line. 
All right, there it was. Cool stuff we found online. I, I had this when I first started doing uh, AFL Spotlight. I had this idea that once a week, I would, you know, leading up to the very first week, I put tons of time into that intro, that forty second intro <laughs> song at the beginning of the the show, and um, and then for week two, I made up the cool stuff we found online song and and put that little little graphic together where the thing searches in the web search and um and and i thought okay on week three i'll do a song for a full q a and on week four i'll do a song for show and tell and yeah and i'll have other i'll you know I'll have these other uh segments that come up and and i never did any more so that's why a q a and show and tell still don't have songs and and um but the bricklink battle has a song did you guys did you guys catch uh uh moto and um did you guys catch Moto and Blair doing the Bricklink battle last week? No, no. So, so I have this new thing, and we couldn't do it tonight because I'm, I'm still figuring out how to facilitate having two guests that can each share their web browser. Um, right. And and Jeff McElwee told me that I, I should be able to use Discord for that. So hopefully oh, yeah. that's coming in the future, and it's this great new segment, and it. I don't know. It could be its whole its own show, um, but it's the, it was this hilarious thing we did where, you know, guy, the Moto and Blair are on Bricklink trying to get from one old Lego set to another old Lego set just by clicking on like the 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 parts and stuff that that those two sets have in common. Um, and they raced and, and Moto, of course, won. So he'll be back. He'll be back to defend his title on, uh, and that's that. The unfortunately, everyone, sorry, we don't, we don't, we're not doing it this week. But, but the theme song for that just came out of me. It was, um, it was, uh, we're gonna have a brick link battle, and it was. And so that, <laughs> I've already done the work. It's like some of my best work is done on the fly when I don't have time to think about it. But it has a very foreigner feeling to it. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. No, <laughs> I have one that I found online that I don't have a picture for, and the builder is actually reasonably, actually very well known. But I just wanted to highlight um, Jermaine's BX Bricks Transformers. He's got like, oh, um, yeah. he's done like 200 Transformers, like that all transform. It's an amazing collection. And, and I didn't know when we were on Lego Masters together that he did that. Yeah. And it's he has recently like finished, right? Like yeah, he's yeah. recently gotten to like the end of all the transformers that have ever existed, or like in I don't know Gen One or Gen which, whichever generations. But he's it's like yeah. at some point he reached the end and he's done them all now, and so he can give up. Um, on on no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right, you ready for this? Yes. Yep. So this is um, Gail Spiller. Um, I don't know if any of you follow her on Instagram, but she is one of my favorite builds. And this is the the black family tree. So the so serious blacks family from Harry Potter is the what? family tree. And it's um, so there's the real thing. Yeah. And then it's amazing. It's incredible. And can you zoom in? Oh, cool. that's the best I can do because of course Instagram. Uh, you can't really get close, but check it out. Like all the little flags with all the yeah. names on them and all of the heads. And it's a genius. Oh my genius. gosh. It's amazing. Um, I really, I really, really love her. Um, I really love her work. And if you're not following her, you definitely should. Um, she does such incredible like <laughs> color work. Like, yeah. the, wow. it's so like all of her stuff is so stunning and colorful and really fun. This is getting bigger if I make it. Yeah, just barely. Um, let's make sure we tell everyone where this is. So, Instagram. what's her handle on Instagram? Yeah, Instagram and her, and it's Gail Spiller. G A Y L E. There it, there it is at the top. S P I L L E R. Okay. Um, and so, yeah, yeah, cool. probably, and you know, I do love color, but I mean, look at all of this. I mean, the, just the it's, photographs are just beautiful. Yeah, and she takes beautiful, beautiful photos. You know, it's funny. The color work is so bold. It's different, but it, I'm reminded of Paul Hetherington because it's mm. so colorful. I love this piece. Yeah, I wish it could be bigger. See, this is uh, Instagram. But yeah, this is... Um, yeah, so that's my things I found online. Gail Spiller, follow her. Awesome. Thank you so much. All right, it is 714. 
uh, in our time zone. And I think we should move to a full Q&A. Sound good? Yay. We're moving to a full Q&A. This is another segment that doesn't have a theme song. Theme song <laughs> yet. <laughs> right, there we go. Man, you have a really sophisticated studio going there. <laughs> what? Where you are. It's got like instant like studio musicians yeah, and yeah. got that <laughs> awesome green screen background. That's how we roll. That's how we roll. So, all right, everybody, um, put those questions. I know that Aqua Mike TV has been asking questions the entire stream um, ab about all kinds of topics, and I've been I've been waiting until the end. Yeah, Joe Dorsey, Joe Dorsey. Back when I uh, oh, let's get back to here. Joe Dorsey, where is it? Back when I sang the the Brick Link Battle, Jukebox Hero. Yeah, yeah. similar. <laughs> similar i want to see that now that sounds super fun <laughs> yeah we'll do it we'll do it sometime i'm so sorry we're not doing it tonight i just from a technical standpoint haven't sure. gotten haven't gotten it dialed in yet and everything's different this week um we're but uh, hang out with you <laughs> oh thank you guys it's been so much fun i love it um this is uh from benjamin says what is this is a question we've never answered before <laughs> <laughs> what is your favorite lego build from brick masters so would you like to talk about your favorite build of your own or your favorite build from another team we can do both i think yeah it, so for other teams i'm not going to say my favorite build because i've i've said that before and then i'm like whoa but there was this other one and then there was this other one and there was this other one so I'm not going to say this was my favorite build on Lego Masters, but my imagination was captured by your movie challenge, yours and Mark's movie challenge, with the viewing through the window and the way the – oh, no, yeah, explosion, explosion, explosion challenge. challenge. Yeah. You know, viewing the game through the window and the fact that you're, you know – um, kids were there in it, and it was so colorful, and there were unicorns. I love that one. I mean, obviously the finals pieces were crazy good, but for some reason I keep going back to the way that captured my imagination. Yeah, that I really love that one. I was a, um, I mean, as far as like our own thing, obviously the clock was a big was big for us. Um, and I, I I mention this often, but I really loved our movie challenge build before the twist. Mm. It was one of my favorite things we had done because we really um we really stretched ourselves we did like articulated figures for the first time it was based on renaissance painting yeah it had so much going on and i was really kind of sad that we never got to see the before i mean the after was okay but it wasn't as good as the before for sure yeah. and then as far as like other people's builds oh my goodness there were just so many well melon germain's um uh, amusement park the, yeah melon germain's really amusement cool. park i really really loved that um and you know, I I feel like it's a shame they got um, sent home for it because I thought Crystal's Crystal and Amy's Techno Cyber City thing was so beautiful. Mm -hmm. I really, really loved it. That was a really a, a I was a fan of that one. Um, I'm also, either. although it terrified me, I was really excited. And I'm not saying this just because we're on your show here. I was really excited by your pieces. I was so in love with Timber Town. Oh. <laughs> it was, you know, it was, I think it was so bold and brave of the two of you to do. And, yeah. and it really, I think, set a high mark early, like in the first episode. Well, I, <laughs> yeah, I did that. And, and I thought that it kind of started our whole relationship together as a cast in that I remember we all, most of us took all of our trees off and we ended up bringing them over to you and Mark to use for Timber Town. And I just remember that as being like a moment where I was like, Hey, we are actually all in this together. And yeah, I, I I asked, I remember asking the story, uh, the, not the, uh, the challenge producer. I asked one of the challenge producers, um, can Mark and I go ask other teams if, if we can use their, their trees? And they're like, you can ask. <laughs> oh, like, because they probably expected us to be like, no, yeah, I, I think right? they were, we would right? say no. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, it was crazy. 
Um, Jeff, Jeff McElwee, thank you very much, Jeff. You're, uh, you're an outstanding uh, uh, community member. Jeff, with a $10 super chat, says, Richard and Flynn, do you ever hide your purchases from one another? I, I'm sorry. I didn't read, I didn't read this before I, I, didn't read this before I put it up. Okay. Not talking about for special occasions, but sneaky Lego buying. It fell off the truck, honey, I promise. <laughs> well, I'll start by saying I never have. <laughs> but I'll also say, in fairness, Flynn buys about 96% of the Lego that we purchase together. He's really good at it and has an eye for, you know, uh, where to find it and all that. But he has, he, boxes have shown up in the house before. And I open it up, he said, no, there's nothing in there. No, a long time ago. <laughs> that happened, it happened a long time ago. It hasn't happened since. But I, but he the, went on a clandestine journey to a craigslist pickup of a jumble box that was actually full you make of it sound really terrible it was um well i mean you know what it is it's one of those things where i um i love to find a bargain and i love like going on craigslist and looking for like cheap bulk lego and when you find it and it's there you kind of oh, yeah. jump on it um and I'll tell you, I, <laughs> Alyssa says secret Fabuland purchases. I wish, I wish there were secret oh, Fabuland purchases. But, um, but so I'll tell you, I, I went, I got off of Craigslist for a long time. And then recently, I'm now being enabled. So one of our viewers <laughs> uh, who actually lives in Oakland is an avid searcher of craigslist and it doesn't matter if i mentioned something on the stream that i was like oh you know it would be really great oh i'm so sorry i missed blah 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 uh at least a day later i will get an email from maraid and she'll be like i found this on, <laughs> on craigslist so that's how we got our scooby-doo mystery mansion not too oh long my ago. goodness and she um i was we were talking about um um Golly, why am I why am I blanking now? Not Fabuland, but the other stuff that we got that was Belleville. Belleville. I was talking about Belleville and how much I love Belleville. Belleville's she, rad. Seriously, two days later, found a listing of Belleville for super cheap. I went and picked it up, and it was in pristine condition. I mean, like it was taken out of the package, probably wrapped up in a blanket and put in a box and never touched again. And we got. I think I paid fifty dollars, and we got five complete bell Here, hold on. I'm gonna, I'm gonna yeah, as you guys here, right? Some with the, with instructions. Some with oh, instructions. Amazing. What's that giant oh. dog? Yeah. So this is. Oh yeah, this one's great. So this one is from um, a fairy tale called the Tinder Box. It's crazy. The dog has a drawer in its tummy. So yeah. So it comes with this awesome dog. That has a drawer, and I'm not really, um, I'm not really up on this particular story, but there's that. It also comes with a transparent purple treasure chest with these awesome, this awesome transparent pink deal, and then this witch, which I don't know how much you can tell, yeah. it has never been touched. It is in perfect shape, like all the print on her dress and everything is just perfect so she's amazing she's I mean, amazing i have i have the belleville king and oh. he is oh, he's just one of my favorite things i um, love belleville unashamedly i love belleville so i don't oh, I oh and check this out have you ever seen this piece no wow it is transparent purple and it comes in a couple of other colors but it's like ivy leaves growing yeah. up around a window yeah that's weird and it come it's like the backdrop for the witch. So I, I love know. weird I love weird Lego pieces. Oh yeah, check this one. And I, this was one I've never seen. I had seen pictures of Belleville before. This is um the Snow Queen. Switch. Can I switch us? I want to can I not do this? Uh, check her out. The With Snow her, Queen. Like, silver lipstick. And she she was in focus. Yeah, she was oh in my focus. Gosh, she's amazing. Yeah, and she's in she perfect, focusing? perfect condition. Sorry, she, it's hard to focus. Sometimes. And she came. No, I get it. I get it. It's a little. She came with a horse with an amazing horse. Oh, you guys. Yeah, so That's it was awesome. a pretty. Exciting. She's got ice skates on. <laughs> well, I think that trip. Right? 
hunting quality is one of my things that really gets me excited about Lego too. Like, oh, oh yeah, now we have to do something with this piece. And have you ever seen these, Boone? These are super creepy and kind of awesome. But these are the Belleville fairies. So this is Thumbelina. Oh my gosh. She's got, yeah, I'm sorry, she's not focusing, but she's got like she, clear glitter wings. Does she, it, is her skin like mint? It's oh, what's white. It? She's completely it's just white. white. Completely and white. I, I thought maybe you had a green. From the Blossom, this is so funny. This is the Blossom Fairy. And it's the same one, but she's pink and she has like a dress on and it's got pink sparkly wings. Oh my goodness. That, it's, they're weird and amazing. I know. I love them. Um, Sort of real quick details. and totally worth the um totally worth the fifty dollars in my yeah, opinion. Yeah. Oh, I I I believe it. Alyssa said, "What was the best snack on the Lego Masters set?" Oh well, I mean, you know, of course that's going to be if you ask if so now. Okay, so if you ask Mel, he would say peppermint patties. Okay. Um, if you ask me, um, it was the Jelly Bellies, those jelly beans. Oh my god, oh. Those jelly beans. Pirates I never ate the jelly beans. More crunchy snacks, definitely. <laughs> I like. Um, I just, I just, man, I was so bad. I, I was always trying to get them to bring more Coca Cola over to the, to the crafty fridge. Um, <laughs> it, would just, it would just run out, and I was kept thinking, I kept thinking, like, man, we run out of Coca Cola every day, and, um, and I was thinking it was because everyone was drinking it, and somebody recently told me it was because I was drinking it. Um, <laughs> Uh, I don't know whether that's true or not, um, but you know it was it was a crazy time. It was a crazy time that we had to cope with somehow. Um, speaking of snacks, Moto Moto, dude, you're working hard here tonight. You don't have to give me five dollars for cookies, Moto. Thank you very much, and thank yeah, you, Moto. thank you to Dave, thank you to Perry, thank you to uh, Ben, um, and to Moto. You guys are awesome moderators. Uh, couldn't. Couldn't be having a, a safe and fun time in the live chat without you. Um, so thank you. And Moto, thank you very much. Actually, Danny and Jordy are going to make uh, some like cookie bars tonight. No, um, no, so we're, no. up here, we're kind of with the whole extended family up here um, just having a vacation. So they're going to make a pan of cookie bars, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try to have some. But, uh, <laughs> but anyway, thank you very much. Thank you, Moto. That's um, where let's Lego see. Logan cookie time came from is because if you're building for six hours straight or whatever, you need a snack every now and then. Yeah. Yeah. He heard you say that too. Now he's all. <laughs> <laughs> do we need to do it again? No, um, he's all right. See. I just gave him a surreptitious one. It is. It's seven twenty-seven. Do you guys want to be done at seven thirty? Should we take one more question? Yeah, we're, we're, gonna, we're not we're in not, a hurry. We're not going okay. anywhere. Let me look. Let me look for the best question. Um, I didn't eat dinner, so I'm starving. Yeah, we haven't either, but we love being here with you. So whatever, however long you're going to be here, we will be here. Oh. Um, oh, can I show you this, though? A couple of people are asking. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, that's awesome. Is that from Rock Raiders? I think so, yeah. It's a chrome drill piece. It's Ooh, so what are you, cool. What are you guys going to do with that? I have no idea. But somebody had one on the show, and I was like talking about how I was jealous. And my friend Dave, who is like an epic brick picker at Bricks and Minifigs, like he goes, he lives down the street from it, so he goes all the time. Maybe a little obsessive about it, but like literally the next day, he was like, "Oh, I found that thing you were looking for at Bricks and Minifigs," and he came over and dropped it off. So yeah, yeah. Here's a here's a question that um, I find intriguing because. I think maybe maybe it's not a question we're allowed to answer. Was there anything you wish was shown on Lego Masters that wasn't? Are we sure. are we allowed to answer that? Sure. I mean, I kind of already I I already did sort of address that in that I wish that they would have shown the the, the first version the first version of right. all those ones where there was a twist. I feel like I would have liked for them to have shown the pre-twist versions because I know you. I mean, I know you guys felt like that. Like. You built, you know, you worked so hard on this thing, and then you have to completely change it. I mean, at I feel like at least with the with the Mega City Challenge, it was a little bit more adaptable. But the mm -hmm. Move Challenge in particular was yeah. really, yeah. really difficult, and you basically had to change the entire texture Did, of your of your piece. Was it apparent? Was it apparent in the episode that there was a twist, and they just didn't show the pre-twist? 
or was it not even apparent that there was a twist? They I'm shared the wondering. twist in that one. They did. Okay. Yeah, because they remember they had us put the little the little um, oh, the pieces pot. of the little oh, on the marquee on the marquees. Um, so, so, oh, I was just gonna say the thing. My answer to that question is the top two um, was not discussed in the first two episodes. Oh. Yes, and um, and and it was, interestingly enough, um, the so episode one, Aaron and Christian won, and um, uh, Tyler and Amy were in the top two. Yeah, so they were they were basically second place in in episode one. In episode two, Tyler and Amy won, and Mark and I were in the top two. Yeah. Um, and so, you know, because that wasn't shown, and I think it was in episode three that they started, maybe it's like they had enough time yeah. to start showing the top two thing. I think that at the beginning there were just too many, you know, too many stories, too many uh, uh, teams to get through. Um, so there you go, uh, Axton. Uh, oh, I, I, do, I do have one more. Oh, sorry. You go ahead. Um, well, they showed a little bit. They showed Kara um, carrying. Oh, this is exactly what I was. Yeah, they say. showed Kara carrying um, Karen Jesse's model to the pedestal to have it hit with a bat, right? But right. what they didn't show is that many of us had to carry our pieces, and that I mean, I was so. Yeah, we all had to carry our pieces. About. Oh, I guess that, that's right. You had to all get them to the place, right? Mm -hmm. And for me, that was a major like game element, you know, that it had to be sturdy enough to hold together to get it there was a big element of the game in that episode for me. And they never mentioned it. Other than they showed it with Kara um, a as little they were bit. having trouble. They showed him a yeah. little bit, and then they showed, I believe they showed Tyler carrying his up the stairs. Right. But they didn't expressly, like, say to the audience that, like, Oh, by the way, one of the things you have to do is carry the thing like right. 30 feet over to this table. Yep. And that was a rule. And we knew about it ahead of time. Yep. Yep. Um, okay. Yeah. Well, thank you very much. Dave Morgan, um, one of my buddies and uh, and awesome uh, moderators here at Boone Builds with Maybe a $5 super chat. Says thanks so much to Flynn and Richard for a fun and entertaining. Oh, event. thank you. Oh, thank you, guys. And You're I also so want awesome. Real, sorry, real quick. I wanted to say thank you to Jeff uh, in the chat for saying some nice things about our, um, our 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 stress moment that we had during the Smash Challenge. So thank you, Jeff. Oh, we yeah. appreciate that. Was this is that what you're talking about? Uh, it was a little yeah. further up, but yeah. Oh, okay, okay. Well, Jeff, thank you so much, Jeff, and and um, we got. Uh, I'll just I'll just highlight a couple of the other wonderful supporters. We got Cody. Hey, and, hey, uh, hey. And, and Jake Savage are in the chat hey. tonight. Thank you guys so much for being here. Um, well, I think I think we're gonna call it a night. Is that good? We, do you guys want yeah, to sure. want to plug any of your plug any of your links at all? Um, sure. I mean, you can you know where to find us on uh, on YouTube. We're Tricky Bricks on Instagram. No space. We're Tricky Bricks <laughs> on Facebook. We're Tricky Bricks with no space. So it's just like you. Boone builds. Boone builds. Boone builds. It's pretty yeah. easy to it's pretty easy to find. They're all the same. But we do hope that. Um, Maybe some of the new folks that we met tonight will come check out um, our stream. We do uh, Sunday, Monday, Wednesday, and Friday um, every week. And we do a build challenge every week. Um, and then we do a Sunday group chat every week. Um, and so, yeah, we've got lots of fun stuff going on. Hopefully awesome. you check it out. You guys are great. Um, thank, thank you all you, so George. much for watching. Thank you for coming to check out uh, uh, my time here with Richard and Flynn. Uh, go to youtube.com slash tricky bricks and hit subscribe. They're gonna you're gonna pick a winner when you hit 2000 of the of the monkey king. Yep, when yep. we hit 2000, we'll be picking a, a winner at random from our subscribers to take home that monkey king warrior mech. So, all right, so, there you go. <laughs> Um, so go check that out and you can find them pretty much everywhere else as tricky bricks with no space. Um, everyone, thank you. It's been awesome. You've been great. Um, I'll, I'll just say quickly that this live stream was brought to you by boonsbuildcamp.com. And I won't say any more about that, but if you, if you haven't been to boonsbuildcamp.com, uh, people are saying great things. <laughs> uh, and, uh, <laughs> It's it's been awesome, Flynn, Richard. Love you guys. It's been so great. I love you too. Thank man. you. Great. Thank you for being. Thank you for being on episode two, season two <laughs> of A Full Spotlight Live. Let's go.